my goal, as always, is to bring you guys value uh, because here's the thing. Life is freaking flying by. Did I say freaking? That's not even my word. That's the PC version of, of, of like when you go to church. So life is fucking flying by. And if you notice, it doesn't matter what you do or don't do beat yourself up, love yourself, eat the right thing, eat the wrong thing, work out, not work out, happy, unhappy, have anxiety or calm as shit. This time, this life doesn't stop for any of that. It doesn't give a shit about your unhappiness. It doesn't give a shit about you are not being productive. So because it flies, because it goes no matter what, there's this thing, this tick-tock, 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 and it just keeps fucking moving. What are we doing inside of that space? So when we get to that place called the other side, can we look God in the face and, and say, I did it all. I did everything I could. I did it my way. And it was a badass fucking life. Can we do that? And this is the time to really get into that focal point to figure out, am I doing everything? Because if I'm not doing everything, then that means there's so much more to do. As you guys know, my saying, you know, wasting my time is one thing, but wasting God's time, hey, that's a little bit different. It's a different level waste because it's precious, it's now, and it's glorious. So my goal is for all of us is to take fucking action. Get your shit done. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter if you're looking to lose weight or you're looking to uh, find happiness, get a different uh, spouse, uh, uh, more money, business business, scale, it doesn't matter if you're not doing it, that inactivity will catch up to you and it will show up in your life in negative ways. When you take action into the direction of the things that you want, you're going to get that response from life called happiness, fulfillment, uh, feeling like a fucking badass, being happy, being amazing. And then you now not only get to experience life at that level, but you get to share. Because look, when you know something really, really well, when you're a professional in a certain field outside of doing it over and over and over again, there's only one other thing you can do with it is to share change people's lives. And for me, I love doing this because of the fact that not that I've, I've mastered certain parts of life, of course, and I'm daily learning. And I love doing these because I learn as I do them. But you, I, I find myself having to share because whatever I have, it's one way of doing God's work. If I can get you guys to, to just inch up a little bit into the happy place, into the God place, into the uh, uh, glorious, I feel amazing right? Then I can get you closer to a place where you can do the work and get out there and change people's lives. So that's me. Anything that's affecting your life and maybe you want to make more money. And there's a lot of that going around today. There's a lot of talk about the entrepreneur space. What does it take to be an entrepreneur? How do I make more money? How do I launch a business? How do I quit my job? How do I get a raise at my job? Why do I feel stuck? Why isn't there ever enough money? Why is there more uh, week at the end of the paycheck? Why why, why? And I'm, there's a lot of it out there today, right? More than ever before. And I'll tell you why, because we're not, you know, obviously we went through the dot, dot com bubble, but now we're in the freaking crypto bubble and the NFT bubble and the game bubble. And there's so many bubbles. And I mean by bubble, we're in that space where people are making tremendous amounts of money around these things that really don't exist. It's like, go get me a crypto. It's like, oh, I can't because it's not sitting on the shelf, but it's this thing. It's out there and it's worth a lot of money. And same with uh, NFTs. What the, what's an NFT, right? And the people that do know are able to leverage that system, make a shit ton of money. I mean, there's some people I had a call yesterday with someone bought a Disney NFT for 49 bucks. It's now at 50 grand in like two, three weeks. What, why? So when I hear people like it's tough, it's hard. I don't know what to do. I want to make more money, but, uh, but, but, but it's all nothing but excuses. I'll tell you guys in the last few years alone, the amount of information and knowledge I have gained from YouTube alone, YouTube is still free. It's the most amazing library in the world outside of the political stuff. What we believe about YouTube to be Google owned all that stuff. doesn't matter for this conversation. What I do want to say about Google being a uh, online university you can go learn about fucking anything. You can go learn about underwater basket weaving, find a way to weave, uh, weave baskets underwater, learn to film that shit, start a YouTube channel, put it out there, get a bunch of traction, run ads on all the other social media platforms, make 
create yourself a following, become the authority in that space. Like you're the mofo underwater basket weaver. And guess what? You gain traction. And then one day maybe you can sell a course about here's how you do baskets underwater. Right. You can become that authority. My point is there are so many fucking ways in my analogy about making money today or any time in America, because America is still the most capital space in the world. Look, you can go right now and collect aluminum cans and plastic bottles and recycle and you can still make money. So the concept of I cannot make money, I don't know how to make money, you're fucking lazy. So shut your mouth, find a way to get to work, and you'll have the money, you'll have the income, then you can do whatever you want with that income. I don't care what you do with the income. The idea is why you're not making money, why you're making excuses, and what's really, really, really holding you back from that thing called making money and you telling yourself stories that it's hard, it's, you know, uh, it's difficult, I don't have online account, I don't have access to the internet. Bullshit. Go to the library, free internet, all you want. You can change your life. It's a matter of choice. Anyway, that's my rant. And this is a Q&A session. And the goal is for me to answer questions you guys have about self-development. It's all about you guys growing as human beings and elevating in your consciousness because that's the purpose and the concept of ascension, right? We are, and I can talk about this because it's just what it is, but we are, we are living in the age of Aquarius, where there's an ascension in the human dynamic and the human consciousness happening right now. What that means is there's automatic energy, there's automatic energy supporting our growth. And there are a lot of people right now fighting it, right? So I'm not going to talk about what's happening in the world that's fighting it as well. But if you go back to the God level and ascension level and us ascending to what's called 5D, this concept of love, peace, happiness, a thousand years of peace, this is, what, this is exactly what's happening and what's taking place. So a lot of people are opening up to it or waking up to many fuckeries happening in the world. And I know this is borderline the other stuff, but it's not. I, I want you to understand that this is about you, your growth, you elevating in vibration and what this means is letting go of the 3D world, letting go of pain, letting go of sadness, anxiety, guilt, shame, all the low vibratory states of the human consciousness. Those are the past. Those are gone. So the future holds love, acceptance, uh, appreciation, God, all the fun, loving things that we were promised that's what this is about so i want you guys to understand clearly that we are ascending and you can either get on that train or you can fight it as hard as you want and um and and it, the, the harder you fight the the harder it's going to be but if you open up to love and just start climbing it's a beautiful thing uh, all right, Janet. Uh, Janet is saying, I joined an MLM and I enjoyed going live selling the product. I did really well at it. However, reality set in and I realized that very few make it to the top in MLM. So how can I find a niche and a product without it being an MLM? I so love your question. I'm going to read that question again. Because I'm going to go, uh, the answer is going to go a little bit deeper into business. Okay, so Janet's question is this. I joined an MLM and I enjoyed going live, selling the product. I did really well at it. However, reality set in and I realized that very few make it to the top in, in an MLM. So how can I find a niche and a product without it being MLM? Beautiful. So here's reality. Multi-level marketing is a business model just like any other business model. So there's affiliate marketing, there's traditional business, there is brick and mortar, uh, online sales of so many different types and kinds. But you're specifically saying, hey, I love the sales process. I love going live, which very few people love going live. And that's something we, I want to chat with everybody about. We're in the video evolution and revolution. We are in the video, like life is a video today. If you're not making videos, you're not doing shit. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm, I'm, it's all about video. So you want to create video content about, we'll get to your point in a second here, Janet. Uh, but we live in a, in a world today where you have to use your voice and get messages out there to the world, especially if you want to build a business. If you don't want to build a business, that's a different conversation. But from the perspective of building any business, you have to get out there. So for example, Janet, 
the, here's a dilemma. We make so much about the product. We make so much, uh, we give the, the, we give the product so much power. It's like I'm doing Facebook live or IG live or TikTok live. I don't know if TikTok does lives. Uh, I'm learning, but we give the, the power to the product. First mistake. The power is me. This is the power. My voice is the power. I am collecting followers. I am collecting value. I want to be the authority in the space of business, entrepreneurship, self-development mindset, right? I want to be the authority. What I happen to sell or what my business happens to be, that's the next level conversation. You got to peel back the onion. But if I introduce you, like if I come out of Facebook live, man, we're going to sell this Sharpie. It's the best Sharpie. It's the number one Sharpie. And there is no sharper Sharpie in the world. And you got to consume this Sharpie. Um, you'll sell some, some people will believe like, holy shit, that's the sharpest Sharpie in the world. My God, I got to have it immediately. Right. But how long is that going to go? So why doesn't that take you to the top? Because you are making the product the leader. People don't follow products. People follow leaders. You must become the leader that people want to follow. You have to do the things that you want your team to do. You have to become that badass motherfucker that people say, holy shit, I'm going there. So Janet, my point is, and not to beat you up that you're not doing these things, but I can sort of guarantee that you're not doing these things just because I'm looking at your message and your question. Beautiful question. I commend you for asking it. You're being vulnerable, which I appreciate. And anybody out there, uh, do the same, be vulnerable, ask questions, but you're Big, big question is how do I find a product? And there it is. Again, we're looking at products and I would turn this thing back to you. Okay. So here's how you find the product, the brand, the thing to sell. Who are you? Who is Janet? What are, what are your passions? What do you love? Like right now, as I'm talking, I'm hundred percent passionate around this conversation. I love doing this shit and you guys feel my enthusiasm, right? Because enthusiasm spreads like a disease, a good disease, right? So for you, I would want to know, what do you love? What do you, what do you stand for? Who are you? Right? So if you listen to the show, this conversation a couple of weeks back, I talked about the five W's that I use in my coaching world is the who, what, when, where, why. So I would want to really like, I would take you through that process there to figure out who is Janet? Like, who are you? Who is this Janet showing up to this Facebook live talking about this product? What are you about? What makes you, you, right? And then we go down the five W's. What do you really want? And what you really want Then here, check this out. You don't give a fuck about the product. You really don't. You want to make money guaranteed. And I know you want to say, yeah, but I got to feel good about it. And I want to uh, love the product. And I got to be a product of the product. I know the MLM lingo too fucking well. I've done it forever. But what you really want is to make money. And yes, there has to be the thing there that I love the product. Got it. But you, so when I say, what do you want? The, the answer comes out of what do you want in here? What, what do you want in your life? What do you want to change? What, uh, what situations are hurting you? What pain is driving this conversation? What situation in your life is saying, uh, you better fucking do something, right? So when you start taking action from the play, place of pain, like I got to make money, I got to, you know, be able to, uh, afford my bills, or I, I have to start investing in crypto. I have to start invex, investing in NFTs, whatever the conversation is, boom, we have a pain point. That's going to drive your, what, what do I want? I'm making fucking money. And now, and here's the thing, because everybody says, Oh, I'm going to this year, 2022, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to take this. I'm going to make 22 my bitch. And what happens is life takes over and they fucking forget because it's not easy. Netflix is easy. Sitting on the fucking couch is easy. Eating Shit is easy. Making a decision to change your life and turn the Netflix off and maybe watch a YouTube video on how to sell yourself and how to become the authority in your space. Now you're doing something different. And this is the point about what do you really want? And then the conversation is, do you really, really fucking want it? And this is where people, yeah, I want it, but I, I'm not really that committed because, you know, I want to lose the weight, but God, that burger, oh, shit. Oh, so you got to find the pain deep down inside of you to say, you know what? I'm done. It's, it's, 
it's my time. And that's why I started this conversation with how much time do we have left? And which takes us to this uh, third W who, what, when, when, when do you want this? How much time do you have left? I don't know how old you are, but you're going to live to what? 80, 90, a thousand. Cool. But it's still capped. So when do you want success? When do you want that money? When do you want the, the stature? When do you want the better car? When do you want the college for the kids? Whatever your situation is, how much time do you have to fuck around anymore? And this is where I call people's bluffs. So it's like you say you want it, but are you doing the thing required to get the result that you want? And 99% of people don't. And that's why, sorry, Janet, that's why a few people make it in MLM because they're driven as fuck and they get to the top no matter what. And I'm not saying you're not driven. I'm just saying that your focus needs some alignment and you can get to the top. Should the company be solid and the product be solid and all that fun shit, right? And then we talk about where. Where are you in the journey? So right now you're saying, hey, I've really got to find a product. I want success. But you have to go through the who, what, when, who, what, when, where. You got to go through the first three to get to the where, because to do inventory, to figure out exactly where you are in the process, you got to figure out who you are, what you really want. When do you fucking want it? And now we can talk about where are you in that journey? You know, how much more work needs to happen? What should be your first step? Should you just start picking up the phone and talk, you know, go Facebook live and start telling people who you are and sending out a message of, of love and, and, and growth and entrepreneurship and have, and, and be vulnerable. Tell people about your struggles. Like, man, this shit ain't fucking easy. Having a job and going nine to five to that, you know, working for somebody else and making their dreams happen. That's, fucking easy even though people complain about it what a hard day at the office shut the fuck up that's no hard day at the office you chose to play fucking small you chose to be a bitch and because you chose to play small and be a little bitch yeah it's fucking hard because that's your world you live in this bubble of shit shit gets you more shit and it stinks and it's horrible and then you got to wipe it well nobody wants shit what people want is a leader they can follow and then because you brought up the concept of MLM, the biggest thing they sell is what? Your why. If your why doesn't make you cry, you're wasting your time. So figuring out that shit, who you are showing up to these situations called products or companies, um, th that's what it's about. So if you want to get to the top, you got to fix, sorry, you, you, have to, you have to grow you. And once you grow you and you got you mastered and feeling strong and feeling amazing and knowing that you're a leader and doing the things that your followers want to do. They're going to look up to you. They're going to follow you. And all of a sudden you're going to have a team and then you do even more. Then you get a coach and you say, okay, coach, what do I do? How do I do this? How do I overcome these, these limiting beliefs that I'm, that I've been holding for so many years. Like now it's like, I can't get to the top. It's a story. Disagree. You can get to the top. Do you believe it? So this is the growth pattern. But again, you got to make it about you, not the product fucking ever. Age has nothing to do with it. So do you know how many people in your age bracket? So if you get into actual, uh, man, demographics and start niching down, it's called niching down. And you are able to have a conversation with people that are retired almost, let's say that are 55 to 65. And you're only looking for those for that age, age group right there, 55 to 65 tired. Maybe they lost a loved one. They got, they, they need to rebrand themselves. They got to recreate their lives. They got to make more money. They want to have fun again. Maybe they want to travel again. Great. You want to travel? Awesome. Let's look at this business together. Oh, you want a better house? Awesome. Let's look at this business together. So there are so many ways to have a conversation from, from yourself. Once you become that leader inside, fuck, I mean, there's really nothing you cannot do. So thank you for that. Congrats. Let me know how I can help. I'm here. So Beth is saying, why am I having so much difficulty getting rid of one of my last but biggest bricks, the relationship? And what's amazing is that Beth, you and I have talked about this quite a few times and sometimes at length. Uh, Beth is a friend and client. I was going to say student, but you're not a student. You're a client of Badass Refactory. So, uh, so the, the question is, why do I struggle with the relationship? And can I, so I guess, Beth, can I be open about this from what I, I'll be as PC as I possibly can, but basically Beth wants out of a relationship. And I hope that other person is not listening to this, but he, he knows. So Beth wants out and I'm assuming from this question, getting rid of one of my last but biggest bricks. 
I'm going to explain to you guys uh, Bricks really quick so you understand her question, which is based in Badassery Factory training. So we all go through life and we have situations happen. As soon as we take a situation, this chapstick, it's just a chapstick, it's just a situation, but who knows, maybe one day it, uh, I stuck it up my nose and it got stuck and I started bleeding and this anchor, this negative situation took place. And because of that, now I have fear around chapsticks and I, uh, I built this what's called these negative stories around it. So when I see chapstick, I get scared. I see blood. Holy shit. Well, that now lives with me. And I call it a brick because we create these situations called fears. They become these bricks. And then we carry them in our bag of bricks through life. And we're looking to have this amazing, beautiful, love-filled, financially amazing life by carrying a million pounds of fucking bricks from the past. Point is, how do you release these bricks or at least flip these bricks into positive stories like, hey, thank God for that chapstick because it actually, long term, it actually saved my life and it taught me something very special about the flavor of wild cherry in the nose, right? So blah, blah, blah. So you can flip any story. The goal is to create positivity out of anything and that's what really sets us free is the mindset around anything. So the relationship. Relationships are some of the toughest fucking things that we do as human beings. Why? Why? Because nobody taught us what a relationship is. Nobody taught us in kindergarten or preschool or after school or detention program or high school or even college or PhD level. Nobody taught us what a relationship really is. Nobody told us what it means to respect the other person. Nobody taught us what honor really means. Tammy and I, 22 years on uh, March 11, since the moment we met, I told her today how lucky she was to have met me. Anyway, that's just my thing, part of my uh, joking. Nobody teaches us the fundamental requirements for relationships. To drive a car, oh, guess what? You have to have practice. You got to get a, a, one of those companies to, to make sure they teach you how to drive, you know, safety school or driver school, right? You got to go do hours of the shit. And then that's not enough. You got to go pay money to take a test, damn it. Yes, because you got to have a test. And then once they pass you, the state authority say, yep, you're a good driver. You may now drive and... Nobody has control over that. You can go get drunk and drive. You can do all kinds of stupid shit, but they gave you permission. Not in relationships. Nobody requires any training. Nobody requires any kind of a permit. Nobody requires any kind of a test like, hey, should you be in a fucking relationship? Do you love yourself? Oh, shit, you don't stay away from a relationship. Oh, you uh, you beat yourself up a lot. Well, guess what you're going to do? You're going to beat up the other person just to make yourself feel better. It's called it's called subconscious and unconscious oxygen is what I call it. It's like, I just, I need to survive. I need to survive. So we do all this shit just to make us feel good. So we go out there and we spread our poison. We put people down. You're a piece of shit. You're wrong. I'm better. You're not good enough. Right. But it's unconscious behavior. So Beth, back to you. Great question. How your biggest struggle is getting rid of this last brick. You know, the answer, you know, this, we've been working together two plus years. You know, the answer, you got to pull the fucking trigger. So you brought it up. I'm going to go for it. Here's bottom line. You don't want it bad enough. You don't want that thing called whatever that freedom is to you bad enough. And that's bottom line. You're justifying this behavior through fear. Well, what are the, and I'm, I'm just making shit up right now, but what are the kids going to think? Am I really doing a good thing? Am I doing a bad thing? Am I going to hurt him? Is he going to die? If I leave him, is he going to have a heart attack? Are the kids going to look at mommy say, mommy, wow, what a bitch you really, you killed him. I mean, so I don't know what stories you're you've created, but here's the problem. The problem is once we create these stories, this is what's really holding us in place, stuck in this thing that you really don't want. The brick is so powerful that it has you consumed and it's not allowing you to take action into the direction that you really want, which is called happy and free, right? You know, you know this, everything about this life is about being happy and feeling free. And if you're not happy and free, you're basically fucked. So Beth, the question is, what do you really, 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 really want? Once you can answer that question, go through the five W's. You and I have not done the five W's yet, but we will soon as I 
we relaunch everything in 22. But listen, the five W's, once you go through those, who the fuck is Beth? Who am I? Like, literally, who is Beth showing up to this situation called the husband? Sorry, the relationship. Who is Beth? Are you showing up powerful? Are you showing up secure? Are you showing up content in your own skin? Are you showing up insecure? Are you showing up fearful? Are you showing up with anger? Because I know the anger that's there. Are you showing up with resentment? And here's the big kicker. Are you showing up with guilt? Because if I do this, oh, that's going to happen. And I know you, and I know your, 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 your heritage, and there's a lot of guilt there, right? But when is enough enough? So who is Beth? Who are you showing up as? And once you really figure out and do that inventory of exactly who Beth is today showing up to this relationship and then showing up to everything else in life because of this brick, then you got some, you get some clarity and say, fuck, am I really doing this again? Like, why? And then you go into what? What do I want? And you can answer the question as to what do I want? And then you go to the next level because the, this one has two. You go into what do I really want? Because we bullshit a lot in the, well, what do I want? Oh, I want more money. No, you don't. You, nobody really wants more money. You want what money brings you, right? You want travel. You want a better house. You want security. You want that chick, the cash in the safe. You want all these other things that represent or that money can provide, but nobody really gives a fuck about having a room full of cash if, you're not, if it's not going to change your life in any way. We all want better things that money can buy. So once you figure out what you really want, then we can now have a conversation about, well, when, you know, how much time we got left here, Beth, right? So I, yeah, I'm beating you up right now. How much time do you have left? You don't know. I don't know. But once you figure out shit, like look at the last two years, the last two years since March, 2020, we're two years in this shutdown bullshit. It flew. It literally flew. The next two years are going to fly even faster. How do you want to live those next two years, the next five years, the next six months, the next month? How do you want to live it? Do you want to live it happy? Do you want to leave it, uh, live it in a controlled environment? Somebody talking down to you and putting you down and you're not good enough and you're a piece of shit? Who the fuck has the right to tell you you're a piece of shit? Who the fuck has the right to tell you that you're anything but perfect? You're a creature and a creation of God. Who the fuck can take that away? And the answer is whoever you give power to. And this is the problem because we blame. Oh, that person's an asshole because he, she calls me this. Bullshit. You fucking let them. You're allowing that person to put you down. Why are you staying around? What, what addiction have you turned this into? What significance are you now receiving from having that person put you down? It's deep. This shit is deep. So when you get tired of, 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 of it all, when you get tired of your allowing, because what you allow continues and grows, just this mofo thing, then you'll put a cap on it. Not in it, on it. You get the point. And then you get to the thing where, you know, the fourth element of, uh, of the five W's is where, where are you in the journey? Because we, we've talked about this how many times now, and where are you? Have you done anything? Are you more tired of it than you were a year ago? Are you more ready today than you were six months ago? Are you more scared? Are you more embarrassed? Is there more guilt today than, you know, what stories have grown? Which ones have diminished? So understanding to do... This inventory is crucial. And then you get to the big mofo. I call it the big motherfucker. It's the why. Why? Why do you want this? You just, uh, she just replied saying she wants freedom. Okay. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want this fucking freedom? Going back to who's Beth showing up as today? What does Beth really fucking want? Freedom. What does that look like? You got to paint that picture. And is this relationship a part of that freedom? right? Where are you in the journey? When do you want it? Where are you in the journey? And why do you want this? And you're saying freedom. I would go deeper into that freedom because just like I said, what do you want? And it's freedom. Okay, cool. But what do you really want? Because I'll, I'll take it deeper and I'll, I'll prove to you that it's really not about 
Because freedom is just a, like saying, oh, I just, I want more money. I'm going to make more money. Uh, freedom, what does that represent to you? What would you do? How would your life change to have this freedom that you're talking about? And then once you break it down into what it really looks like and feels like, then now you can start chunking as to what freedom really is. Is it free to be yourself? And that's also a different, different, deeper level because nobody's controlling who you are today. You're choosing to be who you are exactly in this moment today. He's not changing you. He is not controlling who you are. It's a hundred percent choice. So once you get to the why, why you really, really want all this, you got this. I know you, you're a strong, badass motherfucker. You're amazing. I know what you've been through. You know what you've been through. It's time. So my big message to you is because I started this live today, Beth, go back to the beginning. It's all about time. How much time do we really have left to fuck around? So when do we say enough is enough? And then we take action into the five W's. I hope I answered you. Who water. I need that water person just right here. Oh, tea, sir, coffee, water. How, how fun would that be? All right. Who's got the next question? Bring it on. I see uh, Jay Holtoff. What's up, brother? Uh, Gina, you want freedom. What does that mean? I guess, tell me more, Gina, and I'll, I'll go into it. But what, is, what does freedom mean to you? And you want it today because you've, I would assume you don't have it. So tell me more. Uh, what does that mean to you, freedom? Please drop it in the comments, and I will jump all over that answer. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, Beth is answering, yes, free to be myself without judgment, but who's judging you, Beth? Who is judging you, Beth? <clears throat> free to be myself without judgment. And it's a funky thing, man. The concept of judgment is really a funky thing because everybody judges. We, you know, we're obviously, we live in a world where everything is about judgment, everything, you know, how we look, the hair, the makeup, the, the weight. Oh, you put on some weight. Yeah. I see what's happening. You put on weight. You must not be happy. Oh, you look like shit. Oh man. Did you see her, her, her new boobs? Oh, she just got them installed. You know, so we live in this socially fucked up world today where it's like, you know, that person only got five likes on that post. Shit. And things must be rough. Right. Uh, we're, we're, we're conditioned by the society, uh, to where we're not good enough. So the concept of not feeling judged, you're being judged. I don't give a shit. You can't run from it. So f feeling free is up to you. And that's why I said the, the goal for all of this that we all do is to feel happy and free because that's all that matters. Regardless of what's happening in the world, you feeling, making a decision to feel happy and free, that's up to you. You control the thoughts you have. I had some shit earlier today where I started judging of a certain situation. So my thoughts were going into judgment and why and what the fuck, like what's happening here. And I literally caught myself and said, well, hold on a second. That's not the outcome I want. What I want is totally something else. So I literally within, I don't know, 20 seconds shifted all my stuff, my bullshit up here. And I started having thoughts around exactly what I wanted. This is perfect. This is amazing. This outcome is fucking gold, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And boom, literally within minutes, that situation shifted. And I'm like, wow, that's the power we have. And I'm going to bring that back to you, Beth. You have the power. You just got to make that decision and say never again. Enough is enough. Fuck you all. Because it's all about me. And the concept of making it all about me. Look, people say, wow, I can't be selfish. Yeah, you can. I'm, I'm giving you permission right now to be selfish. Make everything about you. If your iPhone is battery is dead, and I need a boost. I mean, my, my iPhone battery is dead as well. And I say, hey, can I borrow some of your battery? And you're like, yeah, I, I'm empty. I don't have any to give. It's the same for the human dynamic. If you're not in a place that's happy and amazing and beautiful and God-filled and all that fun shit, how, how the heck can you help me? How can you give your fellow man, woman? How can you help mankind? How can you love? If you don't love yourself... And yes, Beth, this is about you loving you. Got to get to that place where you make you number one. Be selfish. Be fucking selfish. Because I, I know the story and it's time. You got to make that decision to, to be that, that badass that God created. 
And that's it. That's it. And I know Beth is now saying that he is the one judging you, but how the fuck is that your problem? You follow me? How is that your problem? It is because you want it to be. Jay Holtoff saying, uh, did anyone else feel a positive energy shift in the last week? Absolutely, fucking lutely huge, phenomenal, big, love it. Uh, great, great shift in energy. There's a lot. You know, I started this conversation talking about the Ascension and 5D and Age of Aquarius and all that fun stuff. So, yes, uh, there's some phenomenal, phenomenal stuff happening in the, in the universe and, you know, uh, stuff that we don't see necessarily, but we feel it. And you do see uh, effects of it. You see it in people. You see it in people transitioning and you see it in people letting some of the shit from the past go. So it is evident. It's, it's out there. You just got to pay attention. So, Jay, I appreciate you being aware because being aware is so important when when we become aware of this moment this is where the power is you know we we call this moment the present because it's a gift right and when we learn to be in the moment which means this being in the moment means that you're not thinking of the future which creates anxiety or focused on the past which brings on depression so we love to beat ourselves up by thinking about the future. What am I going to do over there? What if I can't pay the bills? What if I get fired? What if she leaves me? What if I'm blah, blah, blah. And all of that, the brain doesn't know what to do with it because it's not real. So the, the conscious mind says, fuck, oh, I got to deal with all that shit. Holy Toledo, Batman. Whoa, way too much overwhelm, overload. I can't handle it all. I'm getting anxiety. My chest is getting tight. Holy shit. Am I dying? Is this a heart attack? And this is anxiety. Or what we love to do to leave the present moment, the gift, we love to focus on the past. Man, I should have. I should have did that thing when it was time. I should have bought that crypto. Fuck, damn it. I'm an idiot. Stupid ass. And, you know, you have people around you like family that will confirm that for you. You fucked up. You should have bought you know, crypto.com when it was time and I done told you and you fucked up, you're an idiot. And because of that, you know, you're simply just not good enough. You don't rank all of a sudden and we take those stories on. It's like, fuck, I did fuck up. What an idiot. I could have had more friends today if I would have bought that crypto. I could have had the Porsche, the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, but I'm an idiot. So therefore I'm not good enough. So because I'm not good enough, now I have this thing called depression because I'm focused on the past and the past takes me away from the present moment. This moment, Jay, thank you. This moment is everything. This is, it's perfect. It's God. You know, the concept that God does not have time. That's what this means. It's now. It's this little moment called perfect. And this can take us into a different conversation about perfection because people say, well, I'm not perfect. Um, yeah, you are. I'm giving you permission right now to be perfect, to feel perfect. Look, let me ask you a question. If right now, in this moment, you could do just 1% better, would you? And every single person was like, fuck yeah. If I can make 1% more money, I would. Right now in this moment, not tomorrow. I'm talking about right now in this moment. If you could make another dollar right now, would you? Yes, you would. Uh, if you could look 1% uh, better, would you? Yes, you would. If you could be 1% healthier, would you? Yes. Would you treat people 1% uh, better if you could? Yes. Uh, I can go on and give you a list of a thousand fucking things. The point is very simple. You're doing the best you can in this moment. That right there in this moment is perfection. You are perfect. So the concept of... You're not perfect and be as perfect as your father in heaven is. Who's teaching us that stuff? And what does it really, really mean? That's for you to figure out. I'm not going to get into religion, but I'm telling you, you're amazing. You're powerful. You are perfect. All you got to do now is believe these things. Believe that you're amazing. Believe that you're powerful. Believe that you are made by this incredible intelligence that knew that we require this physical body that it's got to have blood. It's got to have this blood circulating. So it's going to require a pump called a heart. And then we got to have a detox situation where you got the kidneys and the liver and the spleen. And we got all these organs that do their job. 
And then we got to have these energetic systems called the chakra systems. And we have seven of those. They're energy points in the body. And then we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. And we take unconscious behavior, actions. Rather, we take unconscious actions in life because of habits and addictions. And it's this beautiful, perfect system that this intelligent, this intelligence created. So yeah, you're fucking perfect. Believe it. Own it. Be it. Boom, boom, boom. Steven, yes, choose to speak life, man. Listen, life goes in the direction of our thoughts, words, and beliefs, right? So the, the tongue, it's the tongue. You speak over your life every single moment, every, every single day. If you say, I'm tired, guess what? You're fucking tired. What kind of a mindset tells their, 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 their system that you're not enough. You're tired. Don't focus on tired. Is that what you really want is to be tired? It's like, it's like trying to grow a, a beautiful garden of, of, of herbs and vegetables and fruit and all this stuff, but you're, you're watering it with fucking acid. What? What's going to happen to all those plants? What's going to happen to the, the fruit, the, the cucumber? Whoa, the cucumber, it didn't grow because it was tired because the tired was this poison that's called acid and it, it wouldn't grow. And, you know, I just, I couldn't change my life. The poor cucumber. I just, I couldn't grow a garden because, you know, just, it wasn't my time. And we start building stories around this bullshit now, but it was all because of the words, the tongue being the poison and the acid. So start speaking over your life what you want. Very simple. Every single word counts. Every single thought counts. Every single thought you have and every single word you speak is a demand on the universe to give you those things. Do inventory. Go to the where of the five W's and say, where am I at today, man? Like, what the fuck's going on? I keep having the same shit happen over and over. Stop for a minute. Do inventory. What have you done the last 12 months let alone 50, 60, 70 years, what have I done to get me here? Do this little exercise, like really figure it out. What have I focused on? What has been like dominant thoughts up here? What have been dominant images? What movies play in my mind? Because I guarantee you a hundred percent with detailed accuracy that you are today because of all the things that you thought about and you talked about in the last 12, 24, 36 months. Universe doesn't happen by itself. Your life doesn't happen by itself. It's a magical event called creation. God's already here. This ether is already here. All you got to do is press upon it your demands. Give and you shall receive. You have to learn how to receive. The problem is this, though. When thoughts become things, it is exactly that magic right there. Because thinking and speaking, we're literally demanding and impressing demands upon the universe. This, this beautiful ether, this infinite intelligence, we're telling it exactly what we want. So we wake up, you know, five, six years down the road. It's like, holy shit, I put on all this weight. My wife left me. I don't have any money. Business is sucking ass. Uh, I don't do Facebook lives anymore. It's like, what the fuck happened? So when you do that inventory to figure out, well, holy shit, let's back it up five years. Well, the thing happened back then. Somebody, you know, I got fired from a job. And because of that job, then I'm like, well, shit, will I ever get a job? These fears set in. I started hanging out with some people that were maybe drinking too much. And it put me in a loophole of maybe too much alcohol. And they were always complaining about their jobs. And because they're complaining about jobs, maybe I took on a story of, fuck, why would I want a job again? So then I started telling myself that I don't want a job subconsciously. But consciously, I'm like, I got to get a job. I got to save my ass. So you start doing this inventory over the last five years of exactly all the thoughts you had, all the actions you took and exactly what you did. I guarantee you with accurate fucking detail, your life today, you created, nobody else did it for you. But then you say, yeah, but my husband is an asshole. My wife, this and my kids, that and society and shut down and lockdown. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Because what you create is up to you. What people do around you, that's their shit. They're creating for themselves. So once you figure out that you are all about you and you take responsibility, God darn it, schmarn it, this is the motherfucker as well. Responsibility. Stop fucking blaming. Beth, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. It's not his fault. 
It's not his fault. It is not his fault. Did I say it's not his fault? I'm going to say it again. It's not his fault. It's nobody's fault. It's our fucking fault. It is my fault. What I allow will continue. So if I allow the cheeseburgers, that's going to continue the weight gain, the blood work issues, the cholesterol, whatever that shit brings on. Does it give me momentary satisfaction because I'm addicted to cheeseburgers? Oh, it tastes so good. It tastes so good. And you put it next to one of the best IPAs in the world called Big Man's Brew. Holy shit, do we have a package now? And these behaviors become addictive. But I'm allowing that behavior and I'm choosing to say yes to it over and over again until one day I say, whoa, that's not me anymore. I'm now going to make a decision for something different. And this is the power we all have. You have the power, Beth. You guys know the rules. We'll do this. I think where I'm going to start a weekly, this Q and a session every Thursday, uh, launching the, who's a badass show again on Tuesday, two twenty two twenty two, And I'm doing that, uh, for many reasons, just because I love doing it. I love to interview people. So I want to get back into that original on brand conversation of who's a badass in regards to the human dynamic and achievement, et cetera. So we'll have people from all walks of life, from business and money and real estate and crypto and financial uh, shit, uh, all the way to uh, the medicine and health and uh, going to fucking Mars, if that even exists. Did I go there? Did I just do that? I, I did that just right there. Yep. Is it a planet? I, I, we don't, we don't know. And that's the thing. We don't fuck. We know, we know nothing. Anyway, uh, love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. I apologize for the uh, technical difficulties next week is going to be much better. Kick ass. And re remember the beginning of this conversation, how much time you got left. Stop fucking around. Take this time serious. Go through the five W's who, what, when, where, why figure out your shit and blow it up. Love you guys. See you next week. Peace out.